Factors of Production, Sense Business Studies. Welcome back to Sense Business Studies. Please do subscribe and like the video. Also, I have my own YouTube channel called Crazy IGCSE, where I teach seven IGCSE subjects, and I also do solve past papers, business paper structures, etc. So do go and subscribe there as well. So this video is based on economics, factors of production, and the first factor of production is land. So land is basically all the natural resources which exists in the economy, and that will include the surface of the earth, lakes, rivers, forests, and mineral deposits, climates, also like the animals in the uh, on land, even that is counted as land, and the reward for land is rent. Also, the amount of land in existence stays the same, but its supply is to be fixed. But in relation to a country or a business, when it takes over or expands to a new area, you can see that the supply of land has increased, but the supply is not dependent on its price, that is rent. And the quality of land will depend on the soil type, the fertility, the weather, soil erosion, etc. Then since land is not movable, it is called geographically immobile, which means it cannot be moved. But since it can be used for many purposes, it has different purposes. It is called occupationally mobile, which means it can be used for more than one type of a purpose. Then labor is the second factor of production. It is all the human resources which is available in an economy, which means all the employees, workers, and that is like the mental and the physical efforts and skills of workers or laborers. The reward for work is wages or salaries. And the supply, the supply of labor will depend on the number of workers available, which will again depend on the population size. So if there is higher population, the supply of labor will increase. And if the number of years of schooling is less then there will be more labor if the retirement age age structure of the population the attitude towards of uh, towards women working etc everything counts and the number of hours they work is what is influenced by number of hours to work in a single day or a week the number of holidays taken the length of sick leaves maternity or paternity leaves whether the job is part time or full time and lots more now, the quality of labor will depend on the skills, education, qualification of labor and experience. So the higher the skills the person has, the better the quality of labor. The labor mobility will depend on many factors and there can be uh, labor can achieve high occupational mobility so they can change jobs. And if they have the right skills and qualifications is only when it is possible for occup occupational mobility. It can also achieve geographical mobility that is moving from one place to another for a job. And that will also depend on the transport facilities provided, the cost, house facilities, costs, education of the children, family and personal priorities and lots more. The third is capital. So capital is the man-made resources available in an economy. So it can be the machineries used in the business. It can all, capital also has another definition of the money introduced in a business. But here we're talking about the machineries and all of that used. So all the man-made goods which are helped to produce other goods, capital goods, are called capital. And the reward for capital is the interest. The supply of capital will depend on the demand of goods and services, how well the business is doing, the savings in an economy, since the capital for investment is financed by loans from banks, which are sourced from savings. Now, the quality of capital will depend on how good the quality products can be produced using the given capital. Then the capital mobility can depend on the nature and the use of a capital. Now here's an example. An office building is geographically immobile, but it is occupationally mobile. So it cannot be moved, but it can be used for many purposes. On the other hand, a pen is geographically and occupationally mobile. 
The fourth is enterprise, and that is the ability to take risks and run a business venture is called a enterprise. Another uh, meaning is another word is firm. So a person who has enterprise is called as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. So there is a difference between entrepreneur and an enterprise. So entrepreneurs organize all the other factors of production and they take all the risk and decision to make the firm run successfully now the reward for enterprise is profit which will be generated as the business succeeds the supply of enterprise is depend dependent on the entrepreneur skills which will be the risk taking effective communication uh, hard work innovation education the corporate tax so if the taxes on profit is too high that will demotivate people from starting a business then regulations in doing business and so on now the quality of enterprise will depend on how well it is able to satisfy and expand the demand in the economy in cost effective and innovative and creative ways enterprise is usually highly mobile and that is mobile in both geographically and occupationally so you can change the use of your enterprise you can start example a furniture business or you can also start a clothing business if you have the entrepreneurial skills now it can also be geographically mobile as you can set up an, uh, an enterprise anywhere any part of the world now this is the end of our video thank you for watching sense business and don't forget to subscribe and like the video